Good evening and welcome to Plus Spot. Sorry for joining you late. It's definitely going to be an interesting moment and on the show today. We all know what's trending across the globe is the fact that Chelsea has confirmed Graham Potter as a new manager. There's so much um, to talk about this because most Chelsea fans didn't see this coming. A lot of people thought that Pochettino might be in the better position to um, to take the place of Tucho, who was sacked a um, few days ago. So talking to me is um, a football writer, Tunde Young, who will digest and analyze the situation on um, the new coach, Garam Porter. Tunde, it's good to have you on the show. Uh, I was in Thank you very much. Now, are you surprised that um, Gra Graham um, Potter is a new coach of Chelsea? And um, what can you say to this? Um, surprise? No, not at all. Um, this has been in the works for a while now. We know uh, that um, Todd Bowley, the new Chelsea owner, has a liking to Potter. And in terms of, in terms of young, upcoming managers, I think Paul Graham Potter is next up. Uh, the only bit of surprise that might come in is the fact uh that chelsea as an institution is a club we are that, you know that is known for going for ready made chelsea does not necessarily um grow with managers they tend to go with managers that have already achieved stuff rather than hoping that they will come in and do something at the club so uh but that was under roman but we would have we would have appointed Potter. i sincerely doubt it uh but that's the indication of of new ownership, Todd Bowley wants to take the club in a different uh, direction, and Grand Potter is the man. Because if you look at his track record, look at what he has done. Yes, he has not won. He has not won at the highest level, but that's because he has not gotten the opportunity at the highest level. Everywhere he has been, he has over he has, you know, has performed his expectations. Uh, like he was at All Star Sun from from 2011 to 2017. In six years at the club, he took over the club when he were in the fourth division of uh, Swedish football, and he left the club. He took them to the uh, top first division of the Swedish as well for the first time in their history. Uh, qualified them for European football for the first time in their history. Uh, they were knocked out of the 2017 Europa League by by Arsenal. In the round of 16, and they even beat Arsenal at the Emirates 2 1. That's with a known Swedish club. Then from there went to Swansea, and from Swansea to Brighton, uh, where he has, he has, he has uh, set the record for most points in the Premier League season in Brighton history twice since being there uh, in three years at the club. So in three seasons at Brighton, he finished. Uh, twice with 41 points and their last season finished with 51 points they finished ninth that's their highest finish ever in the top flight in their history and they finished just seven points behind manchester united most people don't realize that so if, if he has done all of this with Brighton, imagine how much more he can do with chelsea and with the resources and with the you know with, with, the, with a team that they've just invested almost 300 million pounds in uh just before he comes in so uh the the, the future the future might might be brighter than a lot of people think uh for chelsea right now if Brighton didn't sack um, Grand Porter a few days ago, who do you think is in the poor position to take over? Because, you know, the availability of Grand Porter is because he, has, he was sacked by um, Brighton. Who do you think um, would have taken position, assuming um, there was no, um, Grand Porter wasn't sacked by Brighton a few days ago? Uh, just a... Probably Pochettino, like you said, but just a uh, quick correction. Brighton didn't actually uh, sack, but they let him go to Foco to 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 free him up for Chelsea, and they got they got a ten million fee as as compensation for losing their manager at the start of the season. So that it was good business for them, um, either that way. But other than Brighton, other than uh, Potter, Pochettino's name was also was also mentioned, and it's probably the highest profile manager Chelsea could have gotten. Uh, but uh, they they chose to go with. Go with Potter, and I, I personally, I see the sense in in, in that decision. But you know, uh, with Potter, the expectations are lower, and they would give him a lot of time to achieve his goals. To it. Not only what Potter brings is not just it's just it's not not not, not about winning, it's about getting the team playing a certain way and um, achieving the goals that have been set before him with time. And uh, he signed a five-year contract uh, to Bolly believes in him, which shows that you know that they, they, they are willing to give him time to achieve achieve what 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 he wants. Uh, but for Pochettino, if Chelsea had gone with Pochettino, the pressure to win instantly would have been there, and that thing hanging over Pochettino's neck that you know he still not won um, the trophies at the highest level despite coaching. They are coaching big teams, but they still not failed at PSG with Messi, Neymar, 
and Mbappe at his disposal. So I wouldn't think it's a good idea for Chelsea to go to go for him in a in a situation that is a repute. So now we, we, we Chelsea has a new manager. What's at the expectation? Let's put aside the resume with what he has in his past career. Chelsea is the biggest club for a manager like this, and um, with the caliber of stars in Chelsea and the fact that um, we're, we're we're expecting a lot of people expecting more from um, Tuchel before he left. What do you think would be the challenge ahead of the new coach? Yeah, it's just as you said. Um, the challenge is, is never is, is as as good a manager as he is. He has never done this before at this level. Uh, there's there's a there's a difference when it comes to this level. There's a difference so even commanding the the respect and the attention of the players in the first place. Uh, that might prove to be that might prove to be a you know difficult task. But uh, and on the flip side, it could also work in his advantage because some of the players, a lot of them actually were reportedly unhappy with Thomas Tuchel. So a new manager coming in. Maybe they might take it as a chance and the opportunity to prove themselves uh, to the new manager and get get on his good side. Uh, so there, yeah, there are so many challenges. Like like I said, for Potter coming into a club like Chelsea, that winning is inscribed in the DNA. If Potter comes in and his plan doesn't take effect immediately, they, let's say give him this season, give him next season, and Chelsea are you know, still struggling to find their feet. Chelsea are not winning. Because Chelsea, even when they were playing badly, even seasons that have been absolutely horrific for Chelsea, they ended up winning something. So this is a club that wins. That's all Chelsea does, they win. Uh, so for Potter to come in, uh, the fans will not be patient for long without office, even if the owner will be very but body believes in him. But the fans will start, it will take long for the fans to start asking serious questions about, okay, when are we going to start seeing results? When are we going to start winning? Uh, but uh, the biggest expectation for him right now is to move the club away from Thomas Tuchel's negative defensive uh, style of football to a more progressive at, at, you know, attacking style of football like we saw uh, him achieve with Brighton. And I think you can do that Chelsea as well. Just a matter of time. With the new takeover of Chelsea, from um, do you think um, the new owner there's a difference between when Abramovic was still in charge, or because the ace of um, way uh, as um, Uchem took her was sacked seems to be like there's not been any different from where we've seen it under the Abramovic era, where if you don't win, you get sacked, or we're still going to witness the same um, style of management of the club. Oh, uh, it's a completely different style of management, actually. Uh, there's a trend that is visible here. Yeah. Thomas um, Todd Bowley is working to get everybody that is remotely connected to Ramon Abraham, which out of the club. Uh, it started with the likes of Mariana Ogaraskaya, leaving Peter Cech, leaving, you know, uh, um, the, recent, uh, the recent departure of the head of Chelsea scouting network as well. And, and now Thomas Tuchel, it's, it's, it's a new dawn and Todd Bowling wants to start with, with, a, with a clean slate, wants to start, you know, with, without any distractions or any, any dissenting or any loyalty to the previous administration. So it's, 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 it's a completely different, yes. The the sweet sacking seven games in the season of Thomas Tuchel it reminds a lot of people of uh, Roman Abramovich, but Roman Abramovich would never have hired a manager from Brighton. He would have gone straight to whoever can give us the win right now. But Todd Bowley is playing the long game. He does it. He has, you know, yeah, he, he has done it with his other investments as well. He's also he's also uh, the owner of the, you know, the LA Dodgers, a baseball team in America, and the current coach of the Dodgers has been there for seven years. Uh, so. It's a business model that is very familiar with. It's giving Potter five years. I expect him to stick with that, with that, with, with the terms of that contract, and he could probably even, uh, get an extension depending on how well how well it does. So yes, that that, that, that those are where the fundamental differences between uh, Todd Bowley and Roman Abramovich lie, because Todd Bowley is more focused on the long term. Roman Abramovich wants to win now. And lastly, lastly on on, on football matter before we go to. Um, Volleyball. Let, let me tell, ask you this. The old oh, talking about Tukel now. Where do you think will be his next destination or his preferred destination after the sack? Uh, depends on what he wants personally. Some people react to getting sacked by taking a break. Uh, some people dive straight in. <clears throat> Let's not forget, Tukel was sacked at PSG and that's how he got the 
Chelsea job like almost immediately. Uh, so Leipzig also sacked their uh, manager yesterday, Tedesco. So that position is up for grabs. Tuchel is German, so he might he might he, he might be tempted by that, or he might want to take a break. Who knows? Uh, but in terms of available position right now, Leipzig is the is the, uh, is the most enticing, I would say from from a Togo perspective, but who knows, uh, something else might free up in a few, in, in, in a few months, in a few weeks. It's just football, it's a revolving door, managers come, managers go, and uh, someone of Togo's quality, who I personally regard as a top 10 manager in Europe, comfortably, right now, as you speak. Uh, I think you will get something very soon. Thank you very much, um, Tunde Young, for being part of the show. Thank you for having me, Buddha. thank you. Yeah, um, Tunde Young is one of um, the vibrant um, football writer Nigeria has produced. Yes, yeah, so away from football, we're supposed to have um, the assistant um, coach of um, the volleyball under-19 team. Um, hopefully, hopefully, doing the progress of the program, we can have him. But we'll let you know that um, the Nigerian Football um, Federation, um, under the under-19 um, football national theme, still in um, ongoing right now in Morocco, has qualified for the final of um, the 2022 under-19 men's and African national team. So it's going to be between um, Nigeria side and also the either of um, Tunisia or Egypt for the final. It's also interesting to also to note that um, Nigeria has qualified for the 2023 um, volleyball um, World Cup taking place next year, but the date has not um, be decided. So we're expecting the assistant coach of the side live from Morocco to talk to us on the exploit of this young lad and what they've done so well for us. And if you're looking at um, the profile, this is not the first time. We've been doing so much in the age grade. Of recent, we have the um, under-19 in, um, in Abuja. They, came, they took the bronze medal and they just concluded on the 19 African Volleyball Championship in Abuja. So for volleyball, it's has been an interesting uh, moment. I hope you can see some of the highlights and enjoy some of these uh, wonderful moments as regards to um, the match between Nigeria and Cameroon at the semi-final of the ongoing 2022 Under-19 Men's African National Final. Unless we couldn't get um, the assistant coach of um, the under-19 national side because of network. Let's not forget the under-19 um, national side of volleyball is still in Morocco. Tomorrow they'll be playing the final and they've already qualified um, for the 2023 um, World Cup, under-19 World Cup. And on Saturday, let's not forget, Saturday is World Fencing Day. We'll be giving you so much um, on the World Fencing Day in regards to what is happening in Nigeria in fencing. Thank you for joining us. My name is Mudashiru Shitu. Enjoy the rest of your day.